Okay, so this is the youth physical development model for male athletes. So what you can see here is we've got little bandings around early childhood, middle childhood, adolescence, along with some kind of chronological age. Additionally, we've also got um, denoted around the growth kind of and maturation elements. So we've got periods of rapid growth, steady growth, the adolescent growth spurt, and then a decline in growth rate. So we're taking account of that in some of the training uh, modalities and mechanisms. Alongside that, we then obviously have maturational status. So we know from some of the work from Sean Cumming around how important that is to, um, to take account of when people are pre-peak height velocity in the middle of that peak height velocity, so the adolescent growth spurt, and then in those years post-PHV. What you can see in these little elements here is uh, basically the, how bold the text is, is how much that bit should be influenced in the training program. So you've got fundamental movement skills, FMS, sport specific skills, that's SSS, mobility, agility, speed, power, strength, hypertrophy, endurance, and metabolic conditioning. And what you can see here is that actually, it kind of takes account that our training should go from unstructured, so a lot of free play as a child in early childhood, right up to adding in more structure, more structure, until we're in very high ends of structure at the back end of adolescence. So what that is essentially saying is a lot of our work at that low end of the spectrum with real young children should look mainly like free play and consist of primarily fundamental movement skills, a little bit of um, basic strength training that could just be body weight because we know that most of the adaptations are going to be neuromuscular because we haven't had that big influx of uh, hormonal issues or hormonal releases that we'll get around this area, which is why hypertrophy sits in there because there's no point trying to build muscle mass without some of the supporting hormones to do so. Additionally, you'll see as, as we move through maturation that the emphasis starts to change. So fundamental movement skills always sit in there, but actually they start to diminish in terms of how much we might place um, in terms of their influence. And that shifts towards more sport-specific skills. So that would be your football, your rugby, your tennis kind of specific skills. Additionally, mobility, primarily around that kind of younger age, and then we kind of gradually decrease. Same with agility, speed, power, strength. We're starting to to uh, kind of diminish those a little bit. What you'll notice is that strength sits in there the whole time. And one of the reasons for that is that strength actually underpins a lot of the primary movements that we do. So whether we're um, involved in sport specific actions, we still require strength to be able to produce and reduce and accept force. So it's actually really important. What you can see here is additionally that there's also a female one. So what you'll notice in the primary difference is when that onset of peak height velocity an adolescent growth spurt is different between the two. So around about the age of 12, give or take, for a female athlete, compared to around the age of 13, 14 for a male athlete. A lot of those elements are very similar across into the female athletes. You can see again, the focus on fundamental movement skills, sport specific skills, mobility, agility, speed, power, strength. So what we're saying within this is not that this should be structured and, you know, your four sets of five this, that, and the other three sets of five this, but actually we might build it into games. So that's what I'm talking about, the superhero stuff, the animal flow, all those things for kids. But as we move through, we get more structure into our training program, it becomes more like what we might see in a traditional athletic training program. And that's when we might specifically call a movement a back squat or a front squat or a press up. Here, it might just be in the added um, elements of games. As we move forward, we might start calling you know, things by their proper names, start actually creating proper traditional strength and conditioning programs. So I just wanted to expose you to that youth physical development model because it is the primary kind of model at the forefront of youth strength and conditioning at the moment, and it's not as widely known as it should be. So this is, these two models for male and female athletes are what we are considering best practice in youth strength and conditioning at the moment. So it's important to get up skilled in these and to, uh, to do your best to be to kind of adhering to those.